Now let's understand how we implement DAX. Now to implement DAX, we simply create a DAX cluster. A DAX cluster is a group of one or more nodes and you can have up to 10 nodes per cluster. Each node is an instance of DAX. One of the nodes will be master or the primary node and remaining nodes will act as read replicas. DAX internally handles load balancing between these nodes and you don't have to worry about how it works. And AWS recommends using at least three nodes if you're using DAX in production. Now let's quickly go into AWS console and see how easy it is to create a DAX cluster. All right, here I am in the DynamoDB dashboard and the AWS console and let's go and create a DAX cluster. So from the left menu, go to the DAX dashboard and uh, you can create a cluster using the create cluster button. You can use the video on the right to learn more about uh, DynamoDB Accelerator, but I'm not going to do that right now. You can do it yourself. So this is the DAX dashboard and you simply use the create cluster button to create your DAX cluster. So you simply give it a name, for example, my DAX cluster and then you choose a node type depending on your requirements. So since this is a demo, I'm going to choose the smallest uh, node type and you can choose the cluster size. You can use up to 10 nodes and the recommended is to create at least three nodes. So I'm going to leave it at three and we can enable encryption if you like. And here you have to provide an IAM service role for DynamoDB to use with DAX. So AWS will create this role for you if you simply choose create new, All right? And just give a, a name of the role. So you can say my DAX role and this role will be created automatically by DynamoDB. You, you can provide a DAX uh, subnet group or you can also create one if you like my um, DAX uh, subnet group something like that and you can provide a description similarly DAX subnets and you can choose your VPC or you can create a new VPC and provide it here and choose uh, the subnets. You generally choose at least three subnets and then you can also uh, choose a security group here. So I'm going to go with the default one. And for the cluster settings, I'm going to use default settings. But if you want to change these settings, you can simply untick this checkbox and you can provide uh, the additional settings. The important parts here are the parameter group. Uh, you can choose a parameter group or create a new one. And parameter group is the one that decides uh, your TTL, okay? So I'm not going to change any of this. I'll leave it at defaults and launch the cluster. Now it's going to take a few minutes for the cluster to launch. And once it's available, we should be able to see it in the DAX dashboard. All right, now we can see that the cluster is creating and while the cluster is getting created, let's go and take a look at the parameter groups. Now, uh, the parameter group that was associated with our cluster is this one. So I'm just going to open it and you can see that uh, we have a query TTL and item TTL. These are the only two parameters that are available for your configuration. So you can simply, whenever you want to change, you can edit. Uh, and you can provide your TTL in minutes, seconds, hours, days. Generally, you put them in uh, minutes. So the default TTL is five minutes, but depending on your application's requirement, you can increase or decrease the TTL. Remember that query TTL and item TTL are different and uh, both of them don't affect each other because both the query and item caches are independent of each other. Right, so that was about the uh, DAX parameter group. So going back to clusters, uh, we can see that it's still creating. So I'm going to pause the video here and we'll come back once this DAX cluster is ready. All right, now we can see that our DAX cluster is available. So you can go ahead and click on the cluster name and here it will show us all the details about the cluster. So here we have our cluster endpoint. Now this is the endpoint you should use when you 
make your DynamoDB request. The way to use DAX cluster is simply to send or simply to redirect your DynamoDB API requests to the DAX cluster endpoint. So instead of sending your requests to DynamoDB endpoint, you simply send them to the DAX cluster endpoint. And that's the only change you need to make in your application code to get the DAX cluster implemented in your application. If you go on to the nodes tab, you can see that the three nodes are available here and you can also use these uh, individual node endpoints, but ideally you should only use the cluster endpoint that is shown here, all right? On the metrics tab, you can see different CloudWatch metrics. Alarms are for the CloudWatch alarms. You can create alarms here and manage them here. Tags again are uh, similar to the DynamoDB tags and these are used to segregate your resources typically for billing purposes. So that's about tags. And now that we are done with the demo, I'm just going to delete this cluster. So we are not built for it, okay? So you can also delete any alarms. We, anyways, we don't have any alarms here. So click on the delete button and the DAX cluster will be deleted in a while. So that's about it. Thank you so much. And let's continue to the next lecture.